to what is an incredible mystery and remember where the journey started. That little five pages, that's where the journey started. Oh, that's the best sounding target. This could be gold, it could be silver, it could be copper. Either way, it's a great sounding signal. What if we told you that the long buried wealth of Oak Island has finally been discovered? Rick and Marty Legina finally confirms that they have finally detected the treasure hidden in Oak Island. Join us on a fascinating trip full of twists and turns, culminating in the ultimate revelation. The Oak Island treasure has been discovered. Weird as hell. Yeah. Marty said that Michelle could drop it. See if we have something in there, so. Okay. Let's let him drop it three times. And have him keep monitoring it? Yep, every three we're monitoring. A problem exists in the money pit area. Something is preventing the huge digging equipment from clearing the dirt from the 10-foot wide TF1 shaft about 80 feet below ground. The riddle has been solved, however. They discovered a gigantic rock down there. It turns out that they drilled through it early this year in a little hole named D2. They discovered gold evidence roughly 90 feet down in the hole. However, they discovered a boot over 80 feet down in the TF1 shaft. Oh, is this a shoe? Look at this! <laughs> well, who leaves a boot that far underground? Could it have been an old-time treasure hunter from Oak Island? Perhaps it belongs to someone who lived here many years ago? Who knows? This is all part of the mystery. In 1909, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, a young lawyer and Freemason, helped bankroll the old gold salvage and wrecking company. They thought they'd discovered the money pit, a famous treasure spot. Even though Roosevelt and his team could not find the treasure, they did discover some gold shavings during their excavation. If a boot discovered at the scene belongs to someone from Roosevelt's crew, it could be a significant thing. It could indicate that Rick, Marty, Craig, and their crew are onto something. They're hoping the boot indicates they're digging in the correct location. Finding the boot connects Roosevelt's previous work to the current search. It's like a clue or piece of information that keeps people hopeful and inspired to continue their hunt. They hope that this discovery suggests they're getting closer to uncovering something valuable. As the sun sets, the Irving Equipment Limited and Rock Equipment teams must halt their digging until the following morning. They're hoping to discover something extremely valuable when they return to it. Meanwhile, in the Money Pit location, the Oak Island crew is monitoring the B4C shaft excavation. They are trying hard to uncover any buried mysteries. The wait for sunrise can seem interminable, but it's all part of the process of revealing history and potential treasures. Just five feet north of Borehole C1, the crew is drilling B4C to a depth of 90 feet within the C1 cluster. Earlier this year, they uncovered a remarkable discovery, probable 15th century timber tunnels, as well as high levels of metal and gold. Even though this is the final can, we're not gonna give up. We know that there is a tunnel in the 90-foot horizon. Well, a tunnel means we're close to finding the original money pit. This has created enthusiasm among the team, who believe they may have discovered the original money pit or a tunnel leading to a buried treasure chamber. Despite the fact that this is their final attempt, they remain hopeful. The finding of centuries-old wooden tunnels hints that something significant may be hiding beneath the surface. The presence of silver and gold residues reinforces this belief. The crew believes they are very close to discovering the famous money pit, which is supposed to contain enormous wealth. As they continue to drill, the team remains optimistic. Even though this is the final can, we're not gonna give up. We know that there is a tunnel in the 90-foot horizon. They know that locating a tunnel at a depth of 90 feet is a good indicator. It shows that they're on the correct track and moving closer to their goal. Despite the obstacles they've encountered thus far, including setbacks and uncertainties, the team's determination remains unshakable. They are motivated by the prospect of discovering a historical discovery that will rewrite the book on treasure seeking. With each passing day, they inch closer to unraveling the secrets hidden beneath the Earth's surface. The newest developments on Oak Island have shocked the team. They found a big discovery, a possible ancient timber tunnel. But their excitement was short-lived when they reached bedrock around 130 feet deep in the B4C hole. Unfortunately, they have run out of time for additional excavations in the Money Pit area this year. Despite this setback, the team maintains hope. Their efforts, which included digging five giant steel tunnels over several months, 
have yielded persuasive proof that the fabled wealth, sought after for nearly two centuries, is still buried beneath. The important question now is, what happens next? Rick, Marty, Craig, and the rest of the squad are resolved to solve the riddle once and for all, but it will not be simple. They have overcome numerous hurdles and setbacks along the road. From deadly booby traps to hazardous terrain, Oak Island has tested their willpower at every turn. However, they refuse to give up. To eventually find the riches, they will have to think outside the box. Perhaps it's time to bring in new talent or creative technology. They may even explore earlier clues and speculations, looking for nuances that were overlooked but could lead them to the prize. Whatever path they take, one thing is certain. The Oak Island team will not stop until they have solved the centuries-old mystery and discovered the secrets hiding beneath the island's surface. Later that day, Marty Legina, Craig Tester, and Gary Drayton met in the research center with blacksmithing expert Carmen Lega. They wanted Carmen to examine an iron spike they had recently discovered, buried over 100 feet underground in the B4C hole. This shaft is a critical location where they've been searching for clues concerning the famous money pit. Two years ago, Rick Legina, Gary, and Dan Hensky discovered two massive iron swages while excavating Lot 21. This property used to belong to Freemason Daniel McGinnis, who was part of the initial party who discovered the money pit in 1795. Carmen believed that the iron swages, which are used to sharpen rock drills, were from the mid-15th century. Now the finding of this rock drill in the B4C shaft opens up new possibilities. Could this latest discovery be another piece of evidence indicating that they're coming closer to the treasure everyone has been looking for all these years? Every find like this puts them closer to solving the secrets of Oak Island. This is a wonderful story, a wonderful mystery, and it has only gotten better because of all of you. In recent years, the crew researching Oak Island has made some exciting discoveries. They discovered a stone paved area in the middle of a swamp that may have been built around 1,200 years ago. There is also a stone road in the swamp's southeastern portion that may be more than 500 years old. They've also made findings on lots 4, 8, and 15. These discoveries indicate that they may be coming closer to solving the Oak Island enigma. Could this suggest they're finally narrowing down who could be behind the mystery? It's an interesting possibility. Rick and Marty Legina, the team's leaders, had wanted to uncover the legendary treasure hidden deep in the money pit since they were young. They were encouraged to take on the quest after knowing that many professional searchers had unsuccessfully attempted to locate the riches for over two centuries. After more than a decade of tireless research and with the backing of their dedicated team, the Legina brothers have not only demonstrated that the Oak Island mystery runs deep, but they are also closer than ever to revealing the treasure. So, what might be concealed down in the money pit? The team's progress is extraordinary. They've faced several hurdles, ranging from perilous marsh conditions to the complexity of historical study. However, their tenacity has paid off, bringing them closer to solving one of the world's most enduring mysteries. Rick Legina, a well-known treasure hunter, has gathered his nephew Alex and the rest of their crew in the war room. They are there to plot and plan a thrilling dive operation. They are joined by seasoned diver Tony Sampson and specialist underwater archaeologist Dr. Lee Spence. Dr. Lee Spence has over 50 years of expertise as a treasure hunter and underwater explorer. Throughout his distinguished career, he has made important discoveries, locating over 100 shipwrecks. These shipwrecks contain significant historical riches and antiques, some dating back as far as the 15th century. Dr. Spence's knowledge and natural curiosity have led him to discover gems worth more than $50 million. His discoveries not only shed light on maritime history, but also provide glimpses into the lives of those who traveled the waters centuries before. The partnership between Rick Legina, Alex, Tony Sampson, and Dr. Lee Spence is eagerly anticipated by treasure hunters around the world. They plan to start on an extensive diving operation that could result in groundbreaking findings beneath the ocean's surface. As they gather in the war room, the squad meticulously plans every detail of the diving mission. They evaluate underwater currents, historical study, and cutting-edge technology to ensure a successful mission. With Dr. Spence's extensive expertise and experience, the team is confident in their efforts. His advice and knowledge will be vital as they venture into the depths in search of hidden treasures and historical artifacts. The team, led by Rick, Marty, and Craig, wanted to learn more about what's under the water around Oak Island. So they engaged a company called CSR Geo Surveys Limited to assist them. 
CSR Geosurveys conducted the survey using a tool known as a magnetometer. This instrument can detect metal items beneath the sea. And guess what? The poll revealed some intriguing information. One was near Lot 5, and the other was on Frog Island, on Oak Island's east side. Here's a man who really knows what he's talking about. Dr. Spence thinks that the anomaly near Frog Island is indeed a shipwreck. The team believes this massive object is the wreckage of a great ship that sank a long time ago. But there is an issue. In Nova Scotia, there are laws for looking for treasure in the seas. It's not as simple as jumping in and looking around. However, Rick, Marty, and Craig have a plan. They are hoping that if they can establish there is a shipwreck down there, they will be able to obtain a special permit. This permit would allow them to examine the wreck more closely. So they cross their fingers and hope for the best. Alex Legina and his cousin David Fornetti are joining forces with diver Tony Sampson and underwater archaeologist Dr. Lee Spence to investigate the seas surrounding Oak Island and Frog Island. Their aim is to look into metallic anomalies found during a recent survey. They're specifically looking for a cluster of magnetometer signals that could suggest a shipwreck on Frog Island Shoal. However, there is a catch. For the time being, the team's actions are limited to non-invasive approaches due to environmental laws. That means no digging or removing anything until they find substantial proof of man-made structures or activity. If they find something good, they will need to seek a permit to move forward. The team's primary equipment for this expedition are cameras and handheld scanning devices. These will allow them to collect photographs and data from the ocean floor without disrupting the ecology. Tony Sampson is utilizing an Aquaskin DX200 handheld magnetometer to detect iron objects up to 23 feet beneath the surface. This technology generates magnetic pulses that can penetrate the vegetation on the ocean floor. Their mission is to uncover clues that will lead them to important discoveries. Shipwrecks in this area may include important historical items or riches. They seek to discover hidden treasures beneath the waves by meticulously scanning and photographing the underwater scene. Despite the hurdles created by dense vegetation and environmental constraints, the crew is confident. They understand that patience and persistence are vital in this area of work. Every scan, every image obtained, puts them one step closer to discovering the secrets of the deep. The team's mutual desire for adventure and discovery propels them forward on their expedition. Tony Sampson and Dr. Lee Spence discovered something large and metallic buried beneath the ocean floor's heavy flora, around 20 feet below the seas between Oak Island and Frog Island. However, the mud and bushes that cover it prevent them from seeing it clearly. So they're expanding their search area to see if they can detect any visible debris that could provide information about what they've discovered. They may have discovered another large metal item using a magnetometer, a technology that detects metal underwater. This discovery begs the question, may Tony and Dr. Spence have stumbled onto further evidence of human activity, perhaps even the wreckage of a wreck? And if they have, might it be related to the recent discoveries the team has made in the money pit? such as Gary Drayton, a metal detector expert, and Michael John, a treasure seeker, finding interesting stuff on Lot 8, which is on the western drumline of Oak Island. Finding anything like a shipwreck would be huge because it would allow us to see into the past and comprehend what life was like back then. It could also assist to unravel some of the mysteries surrounding Oak Island, such as why there are so many stories of hidden treasures and secret tunnels. But before we get too excited, Tony and Dr. Spence need to continue exploring and gathering evidence. They will need to meticulously document everything they discover, and they may even need to enlist the assistance of additional professionals to help them understand the material. Only then can we begin to piece together the riddle of what lurks beneath the waters surrounding Oak Island. Lot 8, together with the money pit and the swamp, is receiving greater attention from the team. Gary and Michael are hoping to find any clues to help verify if Scott Clark's incredible theory could be true. Recent findings there have sparked enthusiasm and intrigue. One significant discovery is a bizarre metallic object identified by sophisticated radar and buried approximately 20 feet beneath. This enigmatic object has captivated the team's interest, resulting in ideas and questions regarding what it could be. Another noteworthy find is a stone-paved feature alongside a huge boulder. These appear to be remnants of human activity in the past. The team is excited because finding indications of human presence could lead to new discoveries about the area's history. It's like solving a centuries-old enigma. But probably the most fascinating discovery 
is a semi-precious gemstone known as garnet. What makes this gemstone unique is its potential connection to the Knights Templar, an ancient group of warriors. Scott Clark, a 32nd degree Freemason, believes this diamond may be tied to one of history's most sought-after artifacts, the Ark of the Covenant. This mysterious artifact has captivated people for decades, and discovering any clues about it could be groundbreaking. The crew is ecstatic as they study these discoveries. Each piece of evidence leads them closer to unraveling the mysteries hidden beneath Lot 8. They methodically analyze every feature, trying to discover additional information about the area's history. It's like putting together a puzzle, with each new finding contributing to the overall plot. As Rick, Marty, and Craig wait for the government's authorization to begin a major dig, Gary and Michael are looking for clues to back up Scott Clark's theory. They stumble across an old, oval-shaped chain link. It differs from the modern, spherical ones and appears rough, not like something manufactured in a factory. Gary notes how irregular it is and concludes that whoever made it was not a professional. When you find a chain like that, it usually indicates that someone was transporting something heavy. Perhaps it was wrapped around a large chest or an old box. Gary believes this chain was once used to move a massive chest. But the main question is, who left it laying around on Lot 8? Could it have anything to do with the enigmatic metallic object the team intends to dig up? They can't wait to start excavating as soon as the government gives them permission. This chain could be an important piece of the puzzle, connecting the past and present. If Gary's hunch is correct, it might bring them right to the heart of the enigma hidden below Earth. However, until they have that permit, all they can do is guess and wait for the next major breakthrough. The discovery of a massive ox shoe near a piece of chain, as well as a significant metal anomaly about 20 feet deep, has piqued the Oak Island team's interest. These findings add to a growing array of discoveries uncovered over the last two years, including ancient stone paths and numerous ox shoes, indicating considerable cargo movement on and around the island. Previously, the team discovered an unexpected find between the triangle-shaped wetland and the money pit. Here we go. Here we go. Another excellent sign, mate. Yeah. Gary and Michael's latest discovery on Lot 8 raises the issue of whether they've stumbled onto additional proof of a similar operation. Could this back up Scott Clark's theory that the Knights Templar, a medieval religious order, buried priceless sacred treasures on Oak Island centuries ago? It's a perplexing thought. What might such valuable antiques be doing in this isolated location? The Oak Island team is dealing with a centuries-old mystery with each new finding adding to the complicated puzzle. The presence of large-scale cargo movement operations shows that Oak Island was more than just an isolated location. It could have been a hub of activity, possibly tied into a larger historical story. These discoveries are quite significant. Each discovery takes us closer to understanding the island's mysterious history and the possible motivations behind the actions of those who had lived or visited it. The presence of the Knights Templar who are well known for their contributions to medieval history and the Crusades, adds to the mystery. As the team proceeds to excavate and explore, they encounter more questions than answers. However, with each step forward, they get closer to uncovering the truths hidden beneath Oak Island's surface. It remains to be seen whether the relics are linked to the Knights Templar, but one thing is certain, the search for the truth is far from over. In the Interpretive Center, Rick Legina, Craig Tester, and Laird Niven are meeting with imaging experts John Gienke and David Sampson. They're using the Skyscan 1273 equipment to examine a probable parchment found in TF1 spoils. This paper could be significant since it contains information about what lurks deep within the money pit, a mysterious and booby-trapped site. Iron galling, commonly known as oak galling, is a compound composed of iron salts and tannic acids derived from plants. It was first developed in Europe in the 5th century AD this substance could be significant, since it suggests that anything valuable such as records may be hidden in the money pit. The finding of parchment in the money pit in 1897 piqued experts' interest. They've long hypothesized that the treasure could include not only gold, silver, and diamonds, but also irreplaceable documents. With this new discovery, the team aims to gather additional evidence to support their theory. If this idea is correct, it begs the question of what kind of documents someone would wish to conceal using such ingenious ways. These documents could range from antique maps showing the location of buried treasures to historical records carrying secrets or vital information. They could also comprise personal letters, contracts, or even manuscripts for lost masterpieces of literature or art.
One thing you would generally find in that is not so much of this specific striation. Whatever they are, these documents could be extremely valuable, either financially or historically, making them worth safeguarding using intricate traps and concealing techniques. The next morning, Rick and Marty Legina, together with their team, met in the war room to examine the recent discovery of a probable parchment in the spoils of the TF-1 shaft. They were joined by imaging scientists David Sampson and John Gienke in analyzing the results. During the old gold salvage company's excavation of the money pit in 1909, dynamite was employed to clear rubble from an 1861 collapse to prevent seawater from filling the shaft. Unfortunately, the initiative failed and the company was forced to shut down operations by the end of the year. The crew pondered if they had figured out why they had only discovered little gold particles during their latest core drilling. Furthermore, with high amounts of both silver and gold discovered at the current digging site, known as AC-1, they wondered if they were moving closer to the legendary treasure that had eluded hunters since 1795. The team painstakingly evaluated their data and explored numerous options. They talked about the geological formations in the area and the historical accounts of prior excavations. Rick and Marty expressed their eagerness and commitment to solve the mystery of Oak Island. When they studied the data, they also considered the obstacles they faced, such as the constant threat of flooding and the money pit's structural instability. Despite these challenges, they remained optimistic and focused on their mission of discovering Oak Island's mysteries. It was dropped somewhere right near Rick Legina and his team, well known for their exploration adventures, recently visited a prominent military museum in Lisbon, Portugal. What is their purpose? To delve into the depths of Portuguese military history with the assistance of Cory Janmol, who had organized a meeting with two famous experts, Sergeants Ricardo Lopez and Carlos Magro. Their journey wasn't in vain. Over the last few years, the crew discovered two small cannonballs or stone bullets one of which was discovered in the money pit location, deep within the excavation site. These discoveries were exciting on their own, but the plot intensified with the revelations of geology professor Dr. Robert Ricey. His investigation revealed that the stones came from the Azores, which are part of Portugal's territory. The consequences of this revelation were significant. Could this presumably Portuguese stone shot explain its appearance in the money pit area? an artifact that was absolutely connected to Oak Island and perhaps here to this land. If so, how does this discovery relate to other evidence discovered by the team? For example, early this year, they discovered traces of wooden tunnels believed to date back as far as 1488. Additionally, the researchers discovered substantial amounts of silver and gold in the area. This convergence of observations suggested some fascinating possibilities. Could the Portuguese stone shot be linked to the presence of wooden tunnels, implying a more profound historical connection? Furthermore, may the high quantities of valuable metals indicate a wider story involving hidden treasures or key historical events? It's curious if that is not a coincidence, and it seems as though it is not. The team's exploratory mission was set to reveal additional secrets as they pieced together evidence from the past. Later that afternoon, around 20 miles west of Lisbon, Rick Legina and his team arrived at Quinta de Regalera, an early 20th century palace. Cory Inmel and Templar historian Joao Fiandero had scheduled a meeting to show them a mysterious structure that they suspected was tied to the Oak Island mystery. In 1963, when drilling in Oak Island's money pit, treasure hunters Robert Restall Sr. and Bobby Restall Jr. discovered something peculiar. As they drilled deeper, they encountered a succession of empty holes at odd angles more than 100 feet below ground. This prompted them to consider the possibility of a spiral tunnel around the money pit that led to a buried treasure vault. Now, fast forward to present. The team is researching Quinta de Regalera, looking into an initiation well with nine floors and a 13-foot diameter. This well was constructed over 60 years before the Restalls made their discovery on Oak Island. The issue is, could this possibly be a copy of the money pit? We now start the path in the tunnels. It's a wild concept, but consider it. The parallels between the two are remarkable. Both feature the spiral-like structure and were discovered in unexpected ways. The team is buzzing with excitement as they examine the possibilities. Could this provide clues to the Oak Island mystery? It's a tantalizing thought, and they're eager to learn more. 
As they stroll around the well, exploring its complexities, they can't shake the feeling that they're onto something big. Perhaps this is the breakthrough they've been looking for, the key to revealing Oak Island's secrets once and for all. But there's only one way to find out. Go deeper, explore more, and follow the clues wherever they lead. And that is exactly what they intend to do. Rick Lagina, together with his nephews Peter and Alex, and Oak Island historian Doug Crowell, went about 2,800 miles to Povoa de Lanjoso, Portugal. Corjan Mole, a researcher, urged them to look into probable ties between the Knights Templar, a 14th century group, and several Oak Island findings, such as a stone path, a ship's cannon part, and cannonballs. They began their investigation at Fontercada Church, which has a history with the Knights Templar. King Alfonso I welcomed the Knights Templar to Portugal in 1126 and rewarded them with land and wealth in exchange for their assistance in battling Islamic armies. Some people believe they buried sacred artifacts on Oak Island. Rick Lagina's suggestion that the megalithic cross construction on Oak Island may represent a sign for the Portuguese Knights of Christ is intriguing. In the middle, this is the cross that you will see, for example, on the ships that went to America. And then over time, it got a little bit longer until it ended like this today. Let us break it down. First, we must determine who the Knights Templar were. They were a prominent medieval Christian military order that emerged during the Crusades. Their mission was to protect Christian pilgrims visiting the Holy Land. They were recognized for their valor in combat and fortune, having amassed land and valuables over time. Gualdim Pais, a well-known person in Templar history, has recently played an important role in Portugal. After a successful campaign in the Holy Land, he returned to Portugal and became the Templar's Grand Master. He established Tomar as the new headquarters for the Templars in Portugal, and it is thought that some of their wealth was hidden there. When the Templars were persecuted in the early 14th century, many fled to Portugal. King Denis of Portugal brilliantly rebranded the Templars as the Order of Christ, giving them a new name and logo of a square cross with flattened edges and another cross in the center. Now, let us discuss Oak Island. In 1981, Fred Nolan discovered a boulder cross formation on Oak Island. According to Rick Lagina, this formation could symbolize the Portuguese Knights of Christ sign. There is suspicion that the Templars or their descendants may have buried jewels on Oak Island or left traces of their actions there. If Lagina's theory is right, it could imply that the Knights of Christ had a link to Oak Island and left behind a marking or emblem indicating their presence or the location of hidden treasures. It is vital to remember that this is only a theory at this moment. The relationship between the cross formation on Oak Island and the Knights of Christ insignia is theoretical and would require additional evidence to prove. Oak Island has long piqued people's interest and sparked research, yet many of its secrets have yet to be addressed. Only time and ongoing investigation will expose the truth of Lagina's notion. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay up to date on the latest events in the Oak Island Saga, please subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to never miss an update. Don't forget to leave a comment below with your opinions and theories on what the Oak Island treasure could genuinely be. Until the next time, happy treasure hunting!